From Palo Alto, California, it's theCUBE, covering the Conference Board's sixth annual Innovation Masterclass. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the uh, Innovation Masterclass that's put on by the Conference Board. We're here at Xerox Park, one of the original um, kind of innovation centers here in Silicon Valley. Tremendous history. If you don't know the history of Xerox Park, go get a book uh, and do some reading. And we're excited to have our next guest because there's a lot of talk about tech, but really not enough talk about people and where the people play in this whole thing. And, and as we're seeing more and more, especially in downtown San Francisco, kind of you know an assumption of responsibility um, by tech uh, companies to use some of the monies that they're making to invest back in the community. And, and one of the big problems in San Francisco, if you've been there lately, is, is homelessness. I mean, there's, there's people all over the streets, there's tent cities, and, and it's a problem. And it's great to, to, to have our next guest who's actually doing something about it, small discrete steps, that are really changing people's lives, and I'm excited to have him. He's Kevin Adler, the founder and CEO of Miracle Messages. Kevin, great to uh, to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you too, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. So before we did this, doing a little background mm -hmm. on you, I obviously stumbled across your TED talk, and mm -hmm. it was a really it was a really compelling story. So I wonder, uh, a for the people, you know, what is Miracle Messages all about, and then how did it how did it start? How did you start this journey? Yeah, so uh, Miracle Messages, we help people experiencing homelessness reconnect to their loved ones, and in the process, uh, help us as their neighbors reconnect with them. And we're really tackling what we've come to call the relational poverty on the streets. That, you know, a lot of people that we walk by every day, sure, they don't have housing, but their level of disconnection and isolation is mind-boggling when you actually find out about it. Uh, so I started it four years ago. Um, I had an uncle who was homeless for about 30 years, um, Uncle Mark. And, you know, I never saw him as a homeless man. He's just a beloved uncle, remembered every birthday, guest of honor, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And he was in the neighborhood. He just didn't have a home. He was in, he was in Santa Cruz. He suffered from schizophrenia. And, uh, you know, he, when he was on his meds, he was good. And then he'd do something disruptive and get kicked out of a halfway house. And we wouldn't hear from him for six months or a year. Right. So, you know, after he passed away... I was with my dad and not far from here visiting his gravesite in Santa Cruz. And I was having a conversation with my dad of the significance of having a commemorative plot for Uncle Mark. He said, you know, he meant something to us, like this is his legacy. He said, that's nice, but I'm going to go back in the car, pull out my smartphone, and see status updates from every friend, acquaintance I've ever met. And I'm going to learn more about their stories on Facebook with a quick scroll than I will about at the gravesite of my Uncle Mark. So I'm, I'm actually a, a Christian, a, you know, I have a faith background, and I asked this question, well, how would Jesus use a smartphone? How would Jesus use a GoPro camera? Because I didn't think it was going to be like surfing pigs on, uh, you know, surfboards. And I started a side project where homeless volunteers like my Uncle Mark wore GoPro cameras around their chests, and I invited them to narrate those experiences, and I was shocked, shocked by what I saw. And uh, I, I won't regale you with stories right now, but I heard over and over again people say, I never realized I was homeless when I lost my housing, only when I lost my family and friends. Right, right. And so that led me to say, you know, if that's true, I can just walk down the street and go up to every person I see and say, D do you have any family or friends you'd like to reconnect with? And I did that in Market Street, in San Francisco, four years ago. Met a man named Jeffrey. He hadn't seen his family in 22 years. Recorded a video on the spot to his niece and nephew go home that night, posted the video in a Facebook group connected to his hometown, and within one hour the video was shared hundreds of times, makes the local news that night, classmates start commenting, hey, I went to high school with this guy, I work in construction, does he need a job? I work at the mayor's office, does he need health care? His sister gets tagged, we talk the next day, it turns out that Jeffrey had been a missing person for 12 years. And that's when I quit my job and started doing this work full time. Right. Phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, there's so there's so many great aspects to this to this story. One of the ones that you talked about in your TED talk that I found interesting was was really just the psychology of uh, people's reaction to yeah. homeless people yeah. on the streets and the fact that that once they become homeless in our minds, that we really see through them, and totally. it's which I guess is a defense mechanism to some point because yeah. you know when there's just so many and and you brought up that that. It's, it's not the condition that they don't have a place to sleep mm. at night, but it's really that they become disassociated yeah. with everything. Yeah, so I mean, your introduction to me, if you had said, hey, here's this guy, there's no TED talk, there's nothing else, he, he's a housed person. Let's hear what he has to say. 
it. Like, what would I talk? I, right. I, you know, but you, you, that's what we do every single day with people experiencing homelessness. So we define them by their lack of one physical need. And sure, they need it. But it presumes that's all there is to being human, not the higher order needs of belonging, love, self-actualization. And the, the, some of the research has found that the uh, part of the brain that activates when we see a person compared to an inanimate object does not respond when we see a person who's experiencing homelessness. And in one experiment in New York, uh, they had members of a person's very own family, like mom and dad, dress up to look homeless on the streets. Right, right. Not a single person recognized their own member of their own family as they walk by. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's such a big problem. And, and, and there's so many kind of little steps that people are yeah. trying to do. You know, there's people that walk around with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches sure. that we see on social media. And there's a couple guys that walk around with, with, with um, you know, scissors and, yeah. and a comb and just give, it, just yeah. give haircuts. Yeah. And, you know, these little tiny bits of, of, huma- of, of humanization mm-hmm. Is probably the best way to describe it. Yeah. Makes such a difference yeah. to these people. Yeah, and I was amazed. Your website. You're eighty percent of the people that get reconnected with their family. It's a positive reconnection. That is phenomenal. Because yeah. I would have imagined it's much less than that. Every every time we reconnect someone, we're blown away at the uh, lived examples of forgiveness, reconciliation. You know, and every uh, reunion, every message we record from a person experiencing homelessness. We have four or five messages from families reaching out to us saying, hey, I haven't seen my relative in 15 years, 20 years. The average time disconnected of our clients is 20 years. Right. Wow. So uh, what I've been doing now is once you see it like this, you walk down the street, you see someone on the streets, you're like, that's someone's son or daughter. That's someone's brother or sister. It's not to say that families sometimes aren't the problem. You know, half of the youth in San Francisco that are homeless, LGBTQ, Right. right? But it's to say that everyone's someone, somebody that we shouldn't be this disconnected as people in this age of hyper connectivity and let's let's have these courageous conversations to try to bring people back into the fold right so i'm just curious um it's a great talk by jeff bezos at amazon yeah. talking about some of the homeless situation in seattle and, and he yeah. talks about you know there's a lot he's of, a wealthy guy right he's got a few yeah. bucks he's yeah a few just bucks. a few bucks but he talks about you know there's different kind of classes of homelessness we yeah. we tend to think of them all as the same but you know he talks about you know young families um sure that aren't necessarily the same as people that have, you know, yeah. some serious psychological problems. And you talked about the youth. So there's all kind of these sub segments inside the homeless sure. uh, situation as well. Where do you find in, in what you offer, um, you have the most success? Mm. What, what, what is kind of the homeless subpopulation uh, that you find, you know, reconnecting them with, with their, their history, their family, their loved ones, their friends uh, has the most benefit, yeah. the most impact. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, we've, our sweet spot right now, we've done 175 reunions. Um, and how many, what, what, how many films have you put out? Films in terms of recording the messages? Yeah, to make, to get the 175. I, 175, year, yeah, 175 reunions. We have recorded just north of about 600 messages. Okay. And not all of them are video messages. So we have a hotline, uh, 1-800-MISS-YOU. Okay. Someone calls that number. They can, we gather the information over the phone. We have paper form. So 600 messages recorded about 300, 350 delivered, and then half of them lead to a reunion. Um, you know, a sweet spot, I'd say, it's we, uh, the average time disconnected of our clients is 20 years, and the average age is 50, and okay. they tend to be individuals isolated by their homelessness. So these are folks, you know, for decades, who have had the, the shame, the embarrassment, might not have the highest level of digital literacy, um, you know, maybe outside of any other service uh, provider, you know, not going to the shelter every night, not working with a caseworker, social worker. And we say, hey, you know, we're not trying to push anything on you, but do you have any family or friends you'd like to reconnect with? That opens up a, a sense of possibility that was kind of dormant otherwise. But then we also go at the other end of the spectrum where we have folks who are maybe in an SRO, a single room occupancy, getting on their f- feet through a drug rehab program. And now's the point you know, that they're saying, hey, I'm stably housed. I feel good. I don't need anything from anyone. Now's the time to rebuild that community and that trust right. from, from the loved right. ones. Yeah. Well, Kevin, it's, it's such a great story. Yeah. Uh, you're speaking here later I, later I today so. on, on, uh, <laughs> I believe on Tech so. for Good, which yeah. is good because yeah. there's so much, you know, there's yeah. a lot of negative uh, tech press these days. Yeah. So, so great for you. So how do people get involved if they want to? They want to contribute time, they want to yeah. contribute money, resources, you know, definitely get a plug in there. So we, yeah, so we have, oh, now or later? Right now, well, now. yeah, okay. let them know. No time like the present. <laughs> so we have uh, 1,200 volunteer digital detectives 
These are people who use social media for social good. Search for the loved ones online, find them, deliver the messages. So people can join that. They can join us for a street walk or a dinner uh, where they go around offering miracle messages. Um, and if they're interested, they can go to our website, miraclemessages.org, and then sign up to get involved. And we just released these t-shirts. Pretty cool. It says, everyone is someone, somebody. I'm not a stylish man, but I wear that shirt and people are like, that's a great shirt. I'm like, wow. And this is like a volunteer shirt. Okay, cool. I'm in I business. I putting one on before uh, your uh, thing. I, you know, I, I, I have a, maybe an image of it. I should have. I should have. Yeah, yeah. All right, Kevin. Well, yeah. again, congratulations Thanks, to Jeff. you and you. Uh, and doing good work. I'm Thanks, sure brother. I appreciate super it. super fulfilling every single time you match somebody. No, with their it's, it's great. Yeah, check out our videos. Yeah. Yep. All right. He's Kevin. I'm Jeff. We're going to get teary if we don't get off the air soon. So I'm going to let it go from here. We're at the Palo Alto uh, Xerox Park, really the head, the beginning of the innovation in a lot of ways in the computer industry. Uh, at the conference board, thanks for hosting us here at the uh, Innovation Masterclass. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.